Bill Poker Peeps. Welcome to the vlog. Hey, before we get into the poker, I just want to tell you guys, uh, a number of you guys know that my mom passed away this past week, and I just wanted to tell you guys thank you so much for the support and the notes and the emails that I got uh, with prayers and things like that. So I just appreciate that so, so much. I created a little tribute video for my mom that I put on YouTube. I didn't make it part of the Mr. Bill Poker vlog. However, I'd love for everyone to watch that. Uh, I think it's a nice tribute to my mom. So there's a link here and there's a link in the description. As for the poker, and when we last left off, I had uh, come in eighth place in the bounty tournament and I had won my Wednesday Poker League. So let's get on with the main event. The Windstar River main event. So as you guys remember from a previous vlog, I satellited in on this little bugger. Uh, it was a $1,500 tournament. I got in for $660. $660 for a $1,500 tournament. I like it. One Star River main event. We are about to get fired up and make an announcement. And here we go. And I get to my first table and it's got Abraham Araya, Justin Kruger, Viet Vo, and a number of other really good players. So. It, no cakewalk on this one. First hand that was interesting, I have pocket nines in the small blind. I had 25,500. I had been playing pretty tight. Uh, the plus one who was not playing tight at all, uh, he was wearing a Captain Jack's hat. He, as an older guy, very aggressive, ended up uh, going very, very... He made it 500. I made the call. The flop with 1,100 in the pot is seven of hearts, three of hearts, two of diamonds. It goes check, check. The turn was the eight of clubs. I checked, he bets a thousand, and I make the call. The river, five of hearts. He, I check, he makes a two thousand, I make the call. He shows eight ace, and I win the pot. Yay me. All right, with blinds at 100, 200, I have pocket nines again, this time on the button, and I have 22K. The under the gun makes it 500. Abraham Araya when the hijack makes the call. I make the call. The small blind folds and the big blind makes the call. So on the flop, there's 2,800 in the pot and the flop comes two of hearts, three of hearts, seven of clubs, and it checks around. The turn is the five of diamonds. Uh, the big blind bets a thousand. The under the gun and the hijack both call. I bump it up to 5,200 and they all fold. Pretty nice little semi-bluff there. First break at the main, uh, our table started a little crazy. It's settling now, people are playing real poker. Uh, I had a high of 29,000, a low of 22,000. Ended up with 26.6 at first break, so just a little over starting stack. All right, in tournament play, sometimes you have to get a little bit fortunate, and that's what happened on this hand. It was 300, 600. I'm under the gun with ace of spades, queen of diamonds. I have 15,900, so I'm not doing real well. Uh, I open it up to 1,700. The middle position one, big stack, keeps raising and raising and raising. Uh, makes it 6,200, comes back around to me. I snap all in and he snap calls. Uh oh, he has pocket kings, not good. However, the board goes, ace of hearts, eight of hearts, 10 of hearts, jack of hearts, seven of diamonds, and my spiked ace doubles me up. Now I've got a good stack again. Second break at the Windstar River main event. I have 29,300. That may not sound like a lot, but I cut down to 15,000. Uh, and I got sucked out on a big hand, thankfully. And, uh, so now I'm, I'm a little under average, but that's fine. Doing just fine. All right, we come back from break. First hand after break, 400, 800. I have ace of diamonds, three of diamonds, and the plus one. I have 29K. I make it 2,000. The MP2 is the guy, older guy that just cannot miss in the jack hat. Uh, he makes the call and the big blind calls. The flop with 7,200 in the pot comes four of diamonds, four of clubs, eight of diamonds. The big blind checks. I make it 2,500. The older guy behind me calls and the big blind folds. The turn with 12,200 in the pot is the nine of clubs. I check it. He bets 4,500. I decide to go ahead and give it up and fold and he shows pocket aces. Oh my goodness, I actually lost a relatively small amount uh, that I didn't keep trying to hammer and win that pot. 
So on this hand, I'm the small blind. I have queen of diamonds, 10 of diamonds. I only have 18,100, so I have 18 bigs. Uh, the hijack, the cutoff, and the button all limp. I call in the small blind, and the big blind checks it. So the flop with 6,000 in the pot comes 10 of hearts, 6 of hearts, 7 of hearts. I flop top pair, pretty good kicker. Uh, it checks to the big stack on the button. He makes a 2,500. I'm not going to mess around here. I don't have very many bigs. It's a pretty good pot, and I shove all in. The big blind folds, and the player tank calls. And I am pretty shocked when he turns over five of clubs, four of hearts for an open-handed straight draw and a very teeny-weeny flush draw. The board, however, runs out nine of diamonds, nine of clubs. I win that one. I double up. I go to 40,000. I think the average at that time was about 52,000. So I'm getting closer to having an average stack. All right, this next hand, blinds are 600, 1200, $1,200 big blind nanny. I'm in the big blind with ace of diamonds, 10 of hearts. I have 39,000. The under the gun makes a 2,500, the cutoff, and the button, Abraham Araya, the small blind, and I make the call. The flop with 13,700 in the pot is three of diamonds, three of clubs, four of hearts, and everybody checks. The turn is the ton of diamonds. Everybody checks again. The river is the queen of clubs. It checks all the way around to Abraham, who makes it 4,500, folds to me, and I tank. So earlier in a hand, Abraham had flopped quad eights, and it checked the flop, and it checked the turn, and then he bet on the river, and he got value. So, I had that to think about. I ended up making the call and Abraham mucked his cards. Of course, I made this call because I think that Abraham is a good enough player to go ahead and take some chances, take some stabs when everybody looks weak. Good players simply don't wait to make hands. They try to press and get pots even when they don't have the best hand. And again, Abraham's a really good player. I thought he could be doing that, and I have to be right this time. We're going to dinner break. I have got it back up to average chip, 62,000. That was a great set of levels. I like it. All right, how would you like to be a new woman at my table? <laughs> All right, we're going to have a you be the villain hand here. There is a brand new woman that comes to our table. Now, I've seen her before. She's a good player. I think she's a professional. Anyhow, you are now this woman. You are in the big blind with 10 of diamonds, jack of diamonds. You have about 70,000 chips. It checks around to me in the hijack. I have 62,000. I raise it up to 3,600. The button calls, the small blind folds, and you make the call. The flop with 13,200 in the pot comes nine of diamonds, nine of clubs, two of hearts. You check, I check, the button behind checks. The turn comes the 10 of hearts. You lead out for 5,600. I make the call and the button folds. The river now with 24,400 in the pot comes the king of clubs. You check. I make it 9,100, and now what do you do? The woman, or you in this case, decides to fold. Now, for the next, oh, I don't know, a few minutes, she kept saying, man, I wish I hadn't folded. I think you might have missed your flush draw. And she pretty much kept saying that, man, I wish I'd have called. If I'd have thought about it more, I would have called. <laughs> what did you guys decide to do? I'm hoping that you decided to go ahead and make the call because I had the nuts. Queen of clubs, jack of spades for the straight. However, I may have bet exactly the same way had I missed clubs. So she certainly wasn't far from wrong. My table then broke and I probably went to one of the toughest tables at the main event. This table had on it Matt Bond, Alex Greenblatt, Michael Comro, Ray Henson, there was a Winstar Cash Game Pro and two other guys who I didn't know who were amongst the chip leaders. Woo, what a table. 
and unfortunately my stack showed it. I went from 78,000 down to 43,000. I was absolutely card dead. And of course these guys were putting pressure on me all the time because they're very good players. But patience had its reward because at blinds at 1,000, 2,000, 2,000, I picked up pocket aces in middle position too. I only had 43,000. Uh, under the gun though, who was at one of the big stack players who I didn't know, made it 5,100. It comes to me, I want a three bet here, but I want him to call, so I don't want to make it too big. So I make it 14,100, and he indeed makes the call. The flop with 33,200 comes nine of clubs, eight of diamonds, six of clubs. He checks. I shove all in for 29,000, and he folds. Now, I have to say, I don't know if I like this bet sizing at all from me. Yes, it was less than a pot size bet, but geez, had I bet another, I don't know, 13, 14,000, would I have gotten a call from him? Possibly. Uh, you're taking a little bit of a risk there. Of course, you're taking a risk when you're shoving all in, because anybody that flops two pair or a set, and you're getting snapped off. So, I guess the board was draw heavy with both a potential flesh draw and straight draws on board. So, maybe the all in was okay. I just didn't like it because I wanted to get more chips. About an orbit later, in middle position one, against the very same guy, I have 63,000 and wake up with pocket kings. I make it 5,100. It comes right back around to him in the big blind. He makes the call. The flop with 13,200 comes 753 rainbow. He checks. I make it 4,000, pretty small, and he makes the call. The turn with 21,200 is another seven. He checks, I make it 5,200 and he folds. So I'm up to 84,000 playing an extremely difficult table. So I felt pretty good about it. The fourth break, one after the dinner break, I moved to a much, much tougher table. Uh, at this rate, I have 74,000. Uh, blinds are about to go to 15 and three. So I'm still doing okay a little bit under average. There's only 98 players left, maybe a few more than that. And after the break, we came back for level 13 at 1,500, 3,000, and I won some smallish pots, so I got up to 93,500. Unfortunately, though, sometimes I do make mistakes. In fact, I haven't found a tournament where I haven't made at least uh, one or two mistakes, and this next hand was a mistake. I'm under the gun with 93,500. I have king of hearts, jack of hearts. I make it 8,000, and the big blind, Michael Comro, makes the call. Now, Michael had already shown that he was very sticky, and he was not going anywhere unless he was convinced that you had it. The flop with 20,500 comes nine of hearts, eight of clubs, six of diamonds. Uh, it checks to me. I decide to down bet, hopefully to make it look really strong. I bet 5,500. Unfortunately for me, he makes the call. The turn now with 31,500 in the pot is the five of hearts. It checks to me. I make it 17,000. Oops. I meant to make it 12,000. I put the wrong color chips in and I didn't see that a seven made the straight. Oh my gosh, just bad mistakes. He makes the call. So now I'm flustered. I'm frustrated with myself. The river with 65,500 comes the eight of diamonds. I decide I'll check it. He checks it back. He has nine king offsuit. So the nine makes a pair and he wins the pot. Oh gosh. If I had fired and I'd fired all in, I don't know if he could have called me. Um, maybe he would have. Michael was pretty darn sticky, but this hand was just poorly played from the very inception. Our table then broke and we're getting very, very close to the bubble. Uh, we we're paying 50. I think we're at 56 players. When I went over there, there is two huge stacks at this table. Um, I had 56,000. Blinds are at 1,000, 2,000, and I got a number of hands through, either with no resistance or a continuation bet and take down the pot. But I got uh, ace king, pocket eights, pocket sixes, pocket aces, uh, ace king again, and all of those made it through. 54 left. We get paid at 50. I have 88,500, which is way below the average. I just need to hold on. I need Lewis to help me here on the next, uh, on the next set of levels, and we'll be good. 
So at 3,000, 6,000, we're hand for hand. There's 52 players left. 50 are gonna go on to day two and make the money. Um, it was playing very, very tight at my table. I am on the button with ace of spades, seven of spades. I have 70,000 chips. It comes around to me. I throw in 21,000 chips and the dealer says, that's not a raise. And I said, what do you mean? I didn't see that somebody had raised to 15,000 in front of me. In fact, it was another sh relatively short stack of Log Watcher. Uh, <laughs> and so I ended up taking and putting in the 15,000 for a call. Oh my goodness, bad, bad, bad. I never would have raised Ace of Spades, Seven of Spades to, I wouldn't have even called if there had been a raise before me. The flop came Jack, 10, six. It goes check, check. The turn was another Jack. He bet 5,000. I absolutely snap folded and I just made a mistake on that hand and lost chips when I didn't need to. Now later he told me he had quad jacks. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that I didn't hit an ace or have spades come on the flop. But anyhow, I did make it through. I survived very, very low chip count. I think I had 40, uh, 40,500 going to day two, which is only six and a half bigs. But it was worth $2,600 at least to go ahead and get to day two. So I was actually pretty happy. Well, I don't hardly have any chips left. I only have 40,000, but I made the money. And so main event in the money and come back on Monday. I only have seven big blinds. I just got to double up, but I'm just happy I got in the money in the first place. And the guy who went out on the bubble was at our table. Unbelievable. He had 320,000 chips, way above average. Uh, and then in three hands, he was out. He lost 100,000 on a hand where he got it cut, coolered a little bit. He was down to 220. Then he lost 140,000 chips on a hand to my buddy Rick Merritt. This guy was bluffing. Rick recognized the bluff, shoves all in, guy folds, and Rick was bluffing also. <laughs> so the guy's down to 80,000. The very next hand, he raises it up with pocket queens. The button, who was the big stack, made the call. The flop came jack, eight, three. He shoved with 60,000, the pot was already over that. The big stack snap calls, because he had played jack, eight, and I'm just in my heart saying, Oh, please hold Jack eight, please hold. <laughs> and it did. And the guy that had 320,000 chips, three hands, bubble boy. All right, we're getting fired up for day two of the Windstar River main event. Uh, I'm only coming back with seven big lines. So the idea is to double up early and then play some poker. All right, let go. So coming back on day two, there was 152 players, I believe. I was in 147th place with only six and a half big blinds, but I already made the decision that I wasn't gonna panic. I happened to draw seat three, which is the first big blind, and we were coming back at 3,000, 6,000, 6,000, and I had 40,500. So immediately, if I lost that hand, I'd be down to 28,5. If I lost a small blind, I'd be down to 25,5, but I had already decided I'm not gonna panic if I don't get a hand, if I get pressured and I don't have a good enough hand, I'm simply gonna go ahead and wait and then have an entire round where I could maybe shove my 25-5. But it turned out I didn't have to do that. Um, I was in the big blind, 3,000, 6,000, 6,000, and I thought that the other players were gonna put tremendous amounts of pressure on me. It folded all the way around to the small blind who I had played with before. He was one of the big stacks, but he only completed. I then shoved, I had king four, not a stellar hand, but I thought it was good enough that he wouldn't want to risk 40,500 chips, and I was correct, so immediately I started getting some chips. So a few hands later, it was in the hijack, it checked around to me, I had ace of diamonds, five of diamonds, I shoved, uh, the big stack tanked, but folded, and I got that one through. I was then back in the big blind again with 58,500, pocket sevens, once again, it folded all the way around to the small blind. Now this time he raised to 15,000. I shoved, he tanked, and folded. I showed him the pocket sevens, he actually said I had two unders. <laughs> so he was just trying to pick on me from the small blind, especially with what happened in the first orbit. 
So things are going great. I'm at 73,500 and I've got a table that is being very, very passive. This is really, really good for me. And then our table broke. I went to a table that was much, much, much more aggressive. I knew some of the players there. One of the players there, his name is Patrick. He plays the same club as me. Patrick's a very aggressive player. There was other aggressive players there. There was a hand, however, where a guy raised to 15,000. My buddy Patrick made it like 35,000. Hey, I got pocket queens. I shoved for my 68,000. I uh, came back to the original raiser. He folded and Patrick snap called. We both have pocket queens. <laughs> Holy cow. So we ended up chopping that guy's money. Hey, at least I didn't get four flushed out, so I was happy about that. This next hand, ugh. I'm in the small blind. I have 54,000. It checks around the table. The dealer taps at me, and I look down at my cards. I've got queen of hearts, nine of clubs. It's just small blind against big blind. He's not a big back stack either. That's plenty good to shove all in. So I announce all in. The big blind folds. I go to reach for my chips and I see that Patrick in seat nine is making the call. So I didn't see it. He had raised a 15,000. I then announce all in and uh, it comes back to him and he calls. Now I don't blame this on anybody but me uh, that I have to do a better job because this is the second time this happened. However, the dealer certainly did not help me out. He tapped on the table saying it was my turn. Evidently, Patrick announced a raise. I didn't hear it. The dealer did, but he didn't put his chips out. Um, I then shove all in it. I see him call. I probably should have called the floor. They probably wouldn't have ruled any differently. They probably maybe put my chips in, but I could have at least discussed that said, Hey, he tapped the table. I didn't hear him announce any kind of raise, but it is what it is. And I'd had that mistake twice in this tournament. So that's obviously something I've got to, uh, fix up both times were because I was sitting in seat one and I didn't see seat nine raised. Mm, bad. Windstar River main event uh, out on a mistake hand, which you guys will hear about on the vlog. Ugh, so frustrating. I came in 121st for $2,820 or something and in for 600. So not such a bad payday, but it could have been so much more. So in the last 10 days, I have played three tournaments and I have uh, gotten a final table, eighth place in the Windstar uh, Bounty event number two. I won my Wednesday Night Poker League and I made the money, made day two in the Windstar main event. So pretty good 10 days. It certainly helped my bottom line. I'm planning on another Mr. Bill meetup game in either late September or sometime in October. So look for that to come out also. So once again, I just wanted to thank you guys for all the support that I got uh, about my mom's passing. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. And with that, let's end this vlog. Let's keep running good. I want to thank you guys for pressing buttons and subscribing and giving me nice comments. And if you see me, a lot of people say hello, and I really, really appreciate that. So thank you very much for doing that. You guys have a fantastic, wonderful, and blessed week. And I will see you next time. Bye.